So um, let me start with a high-level definition of what cyber threat intelligence, CTI, is. In essence, we're talking about um, an emerging concept for defending against cyber attacks. The idea is that we as a community are facing an asymmetric war against the offenders. They have the upper hand and the industry is constantly looking for new technologies. CTI is one of them. Machine learning is another. We'll talk about CTI today. Let's be a bit more technical. When we talk about a CTI uh, object, cyber threat intelligence object, we talk about a data object with a knowledge about a threat or a potential, uh, or, or an actual attack. So a potential threat or actual attack. And the idea is that this intelligence should be um, actionable. It means that the receiving party of this data object can do something about it. And the receiving party could be a human analyst or it could be a machine, um, such as a firewall, for example, or any other machine. We use CTI objects to describe indicators of compromise or indicators of attack. So indicators of compromise are actual evidence of a system or network breach. Indicators of attacks are more proactive um, data elements and they talk about the intention of the attacker. There are many forms of cyber threat intelligence. Uh, what you can see on this uh, slide is the pyramid of pain uh, originally suggested by David Bianco in 2014. And um, this pyramid describes different types of CTI objects. At the bottom of the pyramids are the objects that, are easily be, uh, that can be easily uh, obtained by the defenders, but at the same time, they can also be easily bypassed by the offenders. And on the top of the pyramid are the objects that it's very difficult to obtain, but once you get them, the, defend, sorry, the offender, the attacker, will have to work very hard to bypass them. So just a quick example, the easiest one, hash values. If we have, uh, if we have identified a malware, it's very easy to create a fingerprint, a hash value of the file. But it's gonna be um, just as easy, sorry, just as easy for the attacker to create a polymorphic mutation of the same um, file and bypass this mechanism. So this is the idea of uh, the pyramid of pain. So once we define CTI objects, let's talk a bit about uh, the meaning of sharing those objects. We're talking about a collaborative work uh, or effort to improve the cyber posture. So sharing CTI objects could be between departments, in the same organization. It could be between elements in the same solution. It could be between companies in the same vertical. It could be between companies and the government, between governments, between anyone to anyone. Regardless of the exact uh, sharing um, or, or the exact parties that participate in the sharing, it's always a complex problem. And it always requires kind of a paradigm change, because most of us, as security professionals, we have a default stance of silo, of keeping things to ourselves, keeping it silent, do not share, do not tell. And this approach requires the opposite, um, 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 the, the opposite my state of mind. It requires open uh, mind and sharing attitude. It's also a very complex problem, not only on the technology side, but also on the privacy, uh, low uh, organizational structure, and other aspects. We can see in this slide the exact motivation for sharing threat intelligence. It is taken from a research done by a Verizon Enterprise in 2015. And what they found out is that 75% of attacks are spread from victim zero, or what we call patient zero, to the next one within 24 hours. 
40% of those attacks spread within, within, uh, sorry, within one hour. So if we can take a detection obtained at one point and quickly transform it into a prevention in other points of the network, of the industry, of the world, we can somehow close the security gap uh, that we are talking, uh, or that we are, we are experiencing today. Let's take a quick look at the academic angle, and it's called the body of knowledge. What is the academic research uh, in the, of this topic? So I could divide it roughly into three uh, distinction, distinctive areas. The first one would be the formats and protocols. So the, the most common example is the family of protocols called uh, Stix Taxi. Um, you might have heard of that. It's an open community effort, uh, currently standardized in a body called Oasis. And most of the uh, security companies are members of that community. So um, Taxi is actually a transport protocol on top of HTTP. Stix is an XML-based language to describe CTI objects. And Cybox is an extension to that language. So together, this suite of protocols can, uh, is a language for defining and also transferring CTI objects from one entity to another. So there's a lot of research around uh, what is the best methodology and language to describe CTI objects. And there are many, um, many um, additional um, uh, languages or um, uh, terminologies that are used today. The second body of knowledge uh, that is currently researched is the structure of the sharing entity. So you can see in this slide, uh, for example, peer-to-peer -peer versus hub-and-spoke structure. What happens when uh, companies share intelligence directly between them or organizations share intelligence directly between them versus what happens when they use kind of a clearance center in between? So the issues that are mostly researched here are uh, topics such as trust relationships, uh, such as um, um, uh, regulation aspects. It's a complex problem. How do you avoid database poisoning, for example, for that, of that uh, repository of cyber threat intelligence? And the third aspect, in my opinion, the most interesting one is the social aspects of threat intelligence sharing. So we'll, we'll start with the animation. This is Mr. Burns free riding the shoulders of Mr. Smithers, his loyal assistant. You guys uh, must have uh, watched uh, Simpsons in the past, and he is a real free rider. So free riders in this context are companies that consume intelligence from others, but they don't share back, they don't give. They don't contribute. And it's really a complex problem um, with many, um, with a lot of research around it. How to, uh, how can, for example, policy in, uh, makers in a governmental uh, en entity encourage companies to share their intelligence? So these are the, um, the research areas. For a complete uh, CTI sharing uh, solution, we need to follow a certain workflow. The workflow is collect, share, and act. And the workflow is done by three disaggregated elements. When I say disaggregated, I mean that each element could be part of the same product or different products. It could belong to one company, one vendor, or to many vendors. It could be deployed on customer premises or maybe in the public cloud. It's completely disaggregated. And the, company, the components are, one, the threat intelligence source feed, so where the intelligence is collected. Then the destination of that intelligence, that's the enforcement point, maybe another product, maybe an analyst that will get that intelligence and act upon it. And in between, either they share the intelligence directly between source and destination, 
Or there is a third component called Threat Intelligence Platform, TIP. So the idea of this component is to add some uh, contextual enrichment and analysis to, um, to, the, uh, to this uh, threat feed. So it is part of many products, including Juniper Networks products that I will discuss uh, very soon. So this is the workflow of a complete CTI solution. But this solution should be a part of the whole life cycle that handles incident response in an organization. So uh, we call it today Security Orchestration Automation and Response, or the acronym is SOAR. So SOAR is actually about um, a paradigm shift in the way we do security today. While in the past, there used to be prevention products, it could be endpoint or network or whatever prevention product, it's not enough today. Prevention products, they work in real time. And evasive malware, evasive attacks, they cannot be caught in real time. We need some time to process. So therefore, there's an additional layer called detection layer that will look constantly, whether it is on the endpoint or in the network, it doesn't really matter, it will look for an actual threat or something bad that happens, but then we need to create a response because it, it already happened. So not only prevention, but also detection and response, this is the complete cycle of incident response today. What I'd like to show you now is how do we do it in Juniper Networks. So we as a company, we have this complete incident response lifecycle with the complete threat intelligence CTI sharing solution. It is called Unified Security Platform, and it is all about facilitating a multi-vendor um, automated secure multi-cloud future. So let's see what it means. This solution will work across different uh, cloud environments. It means that it will work in your data center if it's virtualized by NS6 VMware or if it's containerized by Dockers. It will work in the public cloud if it's Amazon or Azure. It will work in your branches, in your data center, in all the network. It also means that the execution of response is going to be automatic, or at least you could do that automatic. So there was um, um, a comment here from my uh, colleague from Asset earlier about the, uh, the future of automation and machine learning. Um, there are opinions um, to each, each direction whether we should fully automate things or not, but the fact is it's going to happen. So the third point is about leveraging the entire network. We don't want only the security products to participate in this ecosystem of detection and response. We want to be able to respond on a different level, maybe on the router or switch level. And finally, it has to be completely open, which means third-party vendors could participate in that ecosystem, and also anything could be done with APIs. So this is it. This is our unified cybersecurity platform. And to give you a real world example, let's have a look at this. So this is about, uh, this is an example that was presented uh, in all the RSA conferences earlier this year. So RSA was, uh, was in California, it was in Asia, um, possibly, I don't, possibly in, other, in another location. It was all presented there. There's a YouTube video also describing this implementation. So the idea is this. It's um, a threat intelligence sharing deployment with Carbon Black as the endpoint security in this case, Juniper Networks as the enforcement point in this case. Uh, so there's an endpoint with Carbon Black sensor on it. There's a next generation firewall of Juniper Networks. There are possibly switches there that could be also act as enforcement points. And now we're going to follow the workflow of collect, share, and act, and see what happens. So the first thing that happens is the 
carbon black sensor identifies a problem in, in the endpoint. So it does that probably because it's con constantly fed with threat intelligence and something happened on the endpoint that triggered that uh, engine. But the idea now would be for that carbon black uh, management server to generate a CTI object and share that object with the advanced malware detection solution of Juniper. In this case, it's deployed in the cloud. It's called Sky ATP, but it could be deployed on customer premises um, it, just, just the same way. So that's the second stage of sharing. And the third stage is the action itself. So the action is when this threat intelligence is pushed into the enforcement point. In that case, it's a firewall. It could also be a switch. Um, and then this endpoint that was compromised is gonna be moved to a remediation VLAN maybe, or completely disconnected from the network. It's the automatic response. So that's one example how CTI sharing works in practice, combining uh, solutions from two vendors in the same ecosystem or in the same solution. Here's another example. This one is not happening as part of a solution deployed on a customer premise. This one is happening in the back office. And it is all about the power of unity, the power of community in threat intelligence sharing, the motivation that I mentioned earlier. So what happens here is that the industry leading organizations, basically our competitors together with Juniper, are sharing threat intelligence between themselves in an organization called the Cyber Threat Alliance. So in the Cyber Threat Alliance, the key endpoint security and network security vendors are our members, and they all contribute. There are no free riders there because they, it's measured. The contribution level of each vendor is measured. And we all enjoy a collective database of threat intelligence um, um, indicators of compromise and indicators of attacks. And the benefits is only for our, sorry, the benefit is only for our customers. They all enjoy the increased protection of the community. Um, so um, they have better protection with the accumulated intelligence of all uh, vendors that are members in this alliance. So we discussed so far the definition of threat intelligence, the motivation for sharing it, uh, we kind of mentioned the academic aspects and what is the recurrent research areas. Also, um, the complete solution, disaggregated components, the integration into the incident response life cycle, and finally, we saw two examples, one as a solution on customer premise, the other one as um, back office uh, intelligence sharing between vendors. But I think the, com the, the bottom line of all this is the understanding that no one can win the cyber war alone. There's no single vendor that can see it all, that can, can do it all, and we need to find a way to cooperate in an ecosystem of products and technologies from different vendors for the benefit of uh, the greater good for the community. And uh, this is why I find it easy to argue, sharing is caring, and also encourage you with your organizations to share threat intelligence with your competitive organizations, maybe with the government, maybe with the vendors, just share the intelligence because it's gonna be uh, better for all of us. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your listening, um, and also wish you a great conference, and I'll see you around. Thank you.